no questions right now. I posted all my questions in the forum. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> No, I guess, like, out. those are those, like, those are the questions that I have is, like, you know, like, I think your culture is, like, super different to our culture. So, like, how do we, how do we start making strategies that work for us as opposed to, like, strategies that are working for you guys? Like, that yeah. is my, like, like, when I saw that video, I'm like, that, like, to me, in my eyes, that does not work for my, my people, like, my coaching people. I don't. I personally don't think that would work for, um, I know this is the end game, but like getting people into the gym or building that relationship, like that, like that just to me is not, I don't know how to say it. Like that's not us, you know? Yeah. You got to make sure it matches your personality and the personality of your facility. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So I think one of the ways, so we'll start about talking about how you can build that culture and figure out what you should produce. So I think one of the best ways and what we do when we work one-on-one -on -one with people to, to build an idea of culture is we start off by we get on a meeting with their with all their staff and their first the owners then we get on a meeting with all the staff and the first thing we do is we identify what they're good at <clears throat> so we want to say like if we're in the CrossFit realm or the functional fitness realm or whatever. Maybe one coach is really good at weightlifting, one is good at mobility stuff, one is good at nutrition and all that. So we can identify their strengths based off that and now that's there. Then what we want to do is we want to identify their specific personality traits. So if we say like in one sentence, if you could define this person, how would you define them? And then when we write that out, now we have their personalities and we have their strengths. And then we can take that and we have the owner's personalities and strengths that we've done the same exercise with. And we take it all and we combine it into like one long sentence. And then we can really, you'll notice that the cultures and the personality traits are going to either mesh really well or people are going to have differences. And so you can take all that, combine it, and then use that to create content around the culture and personality of your facility. Because the way your employees are and the way you are is going to specifically define the way they're interacting with clients and the way they're kind of outwardly there and talking to people. And so once we do that, we set it up. We say, okay, so-and-so is really good at weightlifting, and he's also a little goofy and a little crazy. So then maybe we set up a little mini-series around something with technical application of weightlifting, but also uh, in a human format. Or maybe someone's super serious, but they're good at mobility. So we set up like the mobility series where it's mobility and it's to the point and it's really kind of technical and talks about body parts and all that stuff. Or yeah. maybe someone's <laughs> just really good at uh, critical thinking and they want to just talk about critical thinking. So maybe we do a critical thinking minute with that person. And now you're going to take each – I like video the best for this too because you're going to take each one of those specific personalities – and you're going to be able to showcase it outwardly, and then it's going to reflect to the public on, based on kind of what you put out and how that looked. Right. <clears throat> yeah, that makes sense. That's kind of what I want to do with Emil and his um, mobility thing. We're like, like I think was it last week that we talked about that? Like the five, do like five episodes, and then boom, like follow along at home on a Saturday afternoon or whatever. Yeah. That'd be a good idea. So you take like, so we can even pretend like Emil's here. So if you had him in front of you and we were doing this exercise, you'd tell him, all right, uh, what are you good at? And so what is he good at? Mobility. Mobility. So now we have his specific strength identified. So we know we want to do something around mobility because it's something he's passionate about. Then the yeah. next step is what is his, what, in, if you could define his personality in a short sentence, how would that look? Oh, man. Weirdo? Super weirdo? weirdo? <laughs> Perfect. Super weirdo. So now what we can do is we can say, okay, we've got someone who's who's really good at mobility. He's also a super weirdo. So now and he what loves we want to, to do is... watch himself. I almost feel like <laughs> loves to see himself. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So... Like he posts all these videos, and they're always of him. That's actually another question I have for you, actually. But I can get to that. But like, so like he likes to see himself, and he likes to like show his weirdoness almost. Mm -hmm. So what I would do around that is like I'd be like, all right, now we have a mobility guy who's a super weirdo. So I'd do the the mobility weirdo minute with him, and it would just be showcase the mobility uh, skill, but be super weird during it, like you normally are. <clears throat> and there's his personality in a nutshell on a weekly series. 
<laughs> that's fucking funny. And then people see that and they're like, man, that really is how he's like. And then people start to kind of build a relationship with that personality and that specific persona of him. And then that's mm -hmm. how you pull clients in during that kind of stuff. Right. So I guess my question on that then, like, cause like this is kind of relatable, like him being like, is it like I get for this stuff? Like, absolutely. I want to video him because he needs is the person that we need to build the relationship with. Like he posts all these stuff online all the time, like of doing certain things, but it's always of himself. I'm like, why would you not use like a client to demonstrate what he's doing? Because I feel like then people are like, Oh, it's, he's working with such and such person. Like what is like, how does that work? Yeah. So I think there's two ways to think about this. He can, one thing you want to get him to do is post like a piece of daily content. It sounds like he's doing something. He's just posting it of himself. And if he's really good at it, people are going to be like, Oh, he's really good at this, but it might be a little bit scary for them <clears throat> to actually see and want to come in and want to check out what he's doing. So yeah, if he, if he did like, one piece every day that was maybe him one day, maybe a client the next day. And he kind of alternated like that. It would probably be for the best because they could see that he's really good at it. But then the people watching can also see the clients he's working with are normal people. And that's how we really connect with people showcasing that we might be good at what we do, but the people we're working with aren't quite as good yet, but they're getting better and they're at different levels and phases. So I do think if you got a client a couple times a week to do these videos with them, it would be really beneficial. Okay. Um, and then should he be posting that on like his own pet? Like he posts a lot of stuff and he just tags us. Is it better for him to post as us on our page? Like that's, that's another one. Yeah. What I would do for him is, I'd have him post his daily content and one piece a week would go on to the Mad Lab page. <clears throat> so that way he's capturing like his own people and his own community on his pages. But then he's also showcasing what he offers on the Mad Lab page as well. Right. So that way you capture, you kind, you kind of get both realms. You get his Facebook stuff that he's not going to have to like pay to promote and you can get his community involved, but then you get Mad Lab. So you can also see the, specific stuff and the specific things he does associated with the gym and you're building two brands that way you're building the mad lab school brand but you're also building the brand of the coaches and ensuring that they are looked at upon as like leaders in your community in your city charlie you can do it in here. <clears throat> um yeah no that makes that makes sense sweet yeah so I think culture is a pretty big one. I'll have to do a podcast on the entire thing of culture. I posted a bunch of videos in there. Hey, look, Dave's on. Is it just the three of us? Yeah. Everybody else listens after the fact, I think. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, those are good questions. So but the good news is dashy training. That's right. <laughs> We got, oh, we got Dutch on here as well. Dutch, do you have any questions? I'll unmute you if you have anything. You are now unmuted. Great. Yeah. Do you have any questions for us, Dutch? For us, Dutch? Trying to make Dave a presenter up here. Sherman. Uh, yeah. Mr. Picardi. Yeah, so I think like every gym has to define and outline their specific culture, what their specific culture is. And they need I, the biggest way I think is to identify the personality traits of each one of your staff and to take those personality traits and mesh them into a mini series or some sort of series that you can showcase who they are in a weekly format and for us it's like our minute with the interns where they're out of control but then we have like healthy tales with one of our coaches who's a nutritional guy and then you have 
How does that work? These little, so Healthy Tales, he basically gets on on camera once a week, and he talks about uh, health and fitness. Sometimes he talks about, like, why weight loss, why when you're looking for weight loss, maybe cardio isn't always the answer. Sometimes he'll talk about different nutritional aspects, like here's some tips for when you're eating healthy on the go. So it's it's like his little nutritional minute and his little healthy minute. So he can talk about anything he specifically wants. I'll share some of those in there as well. And he does but, that one so, time a week? Yeah, he does one one segment a week. So we do the healthy tales once a week. We do the minute with the interns once a week. And then everybody takes turns writing a blog once a week. So we have a, a bunch of videos that go out. And then we have the blog that goes out. And then our Life in the Gym video that goes out. So we end up with a ton of videos. So, so same, do, do you do like the, like the, say, the nutrition and the intern thing? Is that, do you post that at the same time? the same day every week or does it change it changed so what we do is everybody gets a day where they can where they have to post so like monday minute with the interns is due because i posted on or we posted up on tuesday and then tuesday healthy tales is due so we post it up on wednesday mm -hmm. wednesday the blogs due, so we post it up on thursday thursday is when the newsletter goes out and then friday the life in the gym is due because it posts on saturday right that's cool. Yeah, and I think that it, it works really well because you get them producing their own videos and making their own content. You give them a due date, and then they know they have to get in at that specific time. They upload it to the social channels that they need to upload it to, and then you just go in there and make sure everything gets done. And we, the way I keep them on it, too, is every Monday on Slack, I'll post up what's due for the week. And then uh, I tag them in, and they have to respond that they've seen it. They And when it, they've seen it, they post it up, and then we know it's all going to work out. I think Slack's one of the really cool tools for communication, and it allows us to keep them on, keep them in check too, and keep them moving forward, so they don't forget to do things because it's already been asked about and posted. So, like my guys, right now, like we put content out five days a week, right? So, like Emily, Emily's goes up Sunday night. Chesty's goes up Monday night. Tom goes up Tuesday night. TB goes up Wednesday night. Andy goes up Thursday night. So we have consistent, like there's a blog every every day, like every weekday, pretty much almost. Um, mm -hmm. So, at like now, I would be adding something to this schedule in a sense, and I'm just like. Yeah, what like I my would, guy, like my guys are busy, like and like that's my concern is like how to. Like, so what I we've know done have time, but like, you know that like Tom's working like ridiculous hours, and like same with T Bear, and like whether they need to manage their time, on, and that's on them. Like I don't know, but I don't know if I can ask more of them in this kind of sense, you know. Yeah. So what we, what we've done is we've reduced the amount of blogs. And uh, we've gone from blogs to videos. Mm -hmm. So instead of like having everybody posting like a blog every day, uh, we get we got rid of their blogs. We only put one blog a week that everybody alternates through. So once a month, everybody has to write a blog, and but everybody has one video a week to produce and make. So that way, it's mm -hmm. they don't have like double or triple the work. We're just we've just shifted what we're doing to what's popular right now and what people want to consume. And that's right. been pretty good in the fact that it's like it's you don't have any extra work. Now you just have to make a one minute video once a week. And it used to be you have to make a blog. And uh, for our guys, they love they like video a lot more. Uh, I found videos yeah. to be a little bit easier for them to produce. Uh, See, so my they, guys would say the opposite. They like because like one of their so they have each week what content they have to post changes. So we go from like nutrition to a video to a client story to. What, whatever else we have and like they all struggle so much with the video mm -hmm. so and what so are the I tools guess, to making video easy yeah and so what i would do is effective, you know, I guess. yeah so what i would do like videos just tell them you won't you only need to do this for for a minimum of one minute uh i just you just need to open your camera up not rehearsed and just start talking and then turn it off put a bumper on it and you're done I think one of the hardest things for people and to realize is, yeah, so when you watch all of our videos, they're never rehearsed. Uh, there's no script. There's nothing that's, people want to see stuff that's organic and they want to see 
a person with who hasn't like overdone it, who's not reading off a script, who's not just trying to be super, super professional. They want to see videos that are a little more real and raw. And so we find that those are super effective, like our Healthy Tales and our Minute with the Intern series are extremely popular. And the way we do it is we have like a little tripod and a tripod with our phone mm -hmm. set up on it. So I like thinking about like my culture and my community, it like does that. I'm just trying to think like I get that that works for you, but like are people on my end wanting to see like this, this sounds bad, but like professionalism in a, in a sense, right? Like I get like you, you guys are professional and whatever, but you're very fun. You're very goofy. Like, whereas mm -hmm. our people like, you know, like somewhere like, like I think someone like Andy, he would rather want like very, not scripted, but he would want the video to be very succinct and like, you know, do you get what I mean? Yeah. And that's where you get your personality. And if your members are about that personality, your members are going to, be pumped about it. So that's, so that's where you kind of win. It's you, you understand your culture, you know, Andy's going to do serious stuff, but you know, at the same time, Emil's going to do stuff that's associated with like being a weirdo. So Absolutely. there's two aspects yeah. you've taken care of right there. You've got Andy, the serious person, you've got Emil, the weirdo. And uh, so now you have two different demographics you've taken care of. You've got the kind of <laughs> funny weirdo stuff, and then you've got the serious stuff. I'm just laughing because I'm like, Actually, Andy is way more of a weirdo than a meal. <laughs> and see, so that's that's one thing I think we have to define <laughs> with our coaches too. It's like your personality is incredibly important to get out there because it forges a connection with people. And if you're just a serious person 24-7, but that's not you off camera, it's not yeah. sincere. And people aren't going to connect with it as well. They're not going to care as much about it. And I think when we look at professionalism, professionalism is being a master in our craft, like in the gyms and doing all of our stuff, but it's understanding that sometimes you have to do a little bit of self-depreciating humor to get people to understand that you're normal and you're not this like person who does perfect stuff all the time and that you, they really want to connect with someone who's human. And if you can't show humanity, you're never really going to be able to showcase what you actually have to offer to people. That is uh, very, very well said. Absolutely. Now that's key. I think we've got Dutch has a question. Let's open him up. Dutch. Yeah, have you a can question. Tell me that. Yeah. Welcome <laughs> uh, to the question session. Yeah, thank you. Um I, I I guess the biggest question I'm I'm like tiptoeing into social media. Inherently I don't enjoy it. I don't like sharing things about myself. Yeah. It's a brand <laughs> style. I understand the value of a of the business that I'm 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 going in. Um, which types or which which uh, which ones do you get the most engagement from? You know, from people inside the gym and then from people outside of the gym that aren't yet members. Like what 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 kinds of videos? What kinds of posts? What are you, you seeing the most shares from? Like, yeah, yeah, that's my question. That's a good question. <laughs> So what, what I see the most shares from with people inside the gym, uh, our members and our people are all about like the Minute with the Intern series and the Healthy Tales. Those are a pretty popular series inside the gym. Uh, our members love it. They watch every episode. I mean, like they every time a new episode comes out, they're immediately on it, paying attention to it. And then outside the gym, I think something that is really popular is the Minute with the Interns is really popular outside the gym. And then our motivational Monday stuff. So our either a quick video talking about something motivational or a picture with some text on it. Those outside the gym are probably the biggest pieces. Like if we put up a motivational Monday piece and we put $4 into it on Facebook, we'll probably end up getting 50 or 60 likes out of it. <clears throat> um, I think it's just because when people wake up on Monday, they hate their lives. And so if you give them a little bit of pot of positive motivational piece, they feel pumped a little bit and it makes them feel happy and excited about themselves but the things that connect them the best I think are the ones where you make them like my three pillars of content and this works both in with clients and without clients it's are you motivating them once a week are you educating them once a week and are, are you making them laugh once a week and so we accomplish that with like our motivational Monday so that's our motivational piece our educational piece is our healthy tales and then our make them laugh piece is our minute with the intern series and so we hit those three pillars of content every week and that kind of that connects us with different people in our community our members love it because they love the personalities that we exhibit 
And then the people outside really like it because it showcases that we're not these like super perfect people running around with their shirts off, throwing barbells against the wall. Okay. You should post channel? that um, educate, motivate, laugh. That's a real, like those three pillars, that's a really good, I like that. Yeah, oh, I have a video on it. I'll share it in the forum for you guys. Yeah, yeah. that's like, that's awesome. Let's see. I will share that in the forum. I have um, a whole video outlining it, so that's exciting. I'll do a podcast on it too. Get out there. What um? Yeah. What's your page? Stone Age Fuel. Stone Age. Fuel. Yeah, we have two. Uh, you'll notice, like on Facebook, Stone Age Fuel is our big one, um, and then on Instagram, we have Stone Age Fuel, but then we really leverage Stone Age Fuel Barbell Club on Instagram. Gotcha. Mm. If you if you go on Facebook, you can watch all of our stuff, or if you go to our YouTube channel, you'll see all of our series. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, you, you'll know, yeah go definitely go to facebook.com um, forward slash Stone Age Fuel, and you can watch all the series we come out with and all that stuff. Yep. And that'll lead you to everywhere else. So I think that's really good. And the cool thing about having that kind of stuff set up is now that we have motivation piece, now we and then we have our educational piece and we have our funny piece, we take those three pieces and we transpose them over to our newsletter once a week. So now all I have to do is set up a newsletter, put all those pieces into the newsletter, write a little motivational blurb, and my newsletter's finished. So it makes it a lot easier to collect and compile content for the newsletter. You don't necessarily have to actually do anything new to set it up. And you send out a weekly newsletter? Yeah, weekly. <clears throat> and we send our newsletter to our entire list, so not just our members, but everybody. Hello, Dave. You made Hello. it. Dude, that was just 27 minutes of frustration. Yeah, I was like, damn, Dave left. <laughs> He's out of the building. Yeah, he doesn't even well, care. He's done. Now that Dave's here, i got to go. But... Uh, <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> story, story of my life right there. Yeah. <laughs> Shut this down. Shut it down. Right. Anyway, hey, I appreciate it, Chandler. I got, this is really good info, and I'll, I'm on it, but I, I do got to run. Yeah, so and guys. when you post stuff up, Dutch, share it in the marketing forum, too. Be like, what do you guys think? And we can all go back and forth and work on it. Oh. I don't know if that I wanted to be critiqued, but I guess I, I <laughs> uh, do. Get critiqued. Yeah, that's uh, true. And okay. then we can steal your content as well. <laughs> That's the idea. Yeah, I was like, damn, that's a really good idea. I'm going to use that. <laughs> yeah, please do. All right. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Yeah, you're welcome. Later. See ya. And it's just the three of us. All right. Just and then, and then the there was three, three of us. Just the three of us. <laughs> you and so I. I had, stuff, I had stuff to say, but you probably already covered it just because I was in and out of the call trying to get on. <laughs> <laughs> that was exciting. You should oh, yeah. talk about your journey of the call. <clears throat> well, it was an interesting. I was in court this morning, and what? it threw my whole day off. So then I just Ooh, tried to get on this hard. call and transition, and it didn't. It wasn't working. Did you do yeah. something naughty? No, it was actually so. We had a guy. We moved into a new house. Fat, long story short, and he was a um, oil delivery guy, and he started delivering oil, and then it quickly got really weird. And then I'm trying to tell the guy to stay the hell away from the property. And then all of a sudden, like, landscape companies are showing up, giving me bills. And the guy was, like, a total scam artist. So we legally did all, like, you know, documented everything and had to serve them and police reports. It was really weird, right? And then he drops off a bill six months later, just a random another bill in the mailbox. So then I had my attorney go after him on that one, and then they actually then sued us for the money in small claims court. And so I just had to go to court, and the process was awesome. The whole time, I'm, they're just trying to get me to split the bill, like pay half. I'm like, no, I'm going to trial. So I was actually trying to actually go to trial today over a $400 oil bill, and I'm like, I'm going to trial. I kept saying it. So then they, <laughs> they dropped it. I was, I was there to have fun. So well, that's exciting. So exciting. But I, I remember you talking about that. Yeah, it was crazy. I just had to go back for it. It was crazy. Yeah, that's nuts. That's good times. So Dash, where are you at with um, 
like with the with the overall team with you know how are they doing? I think the thing I wanted to add, which you might have talked about already, was like you had said like how to get the guys to do more work. Um, and I wanted like and that was I know Chandler talked about like you know it doesn't have to be a blog post every day. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just more like along the lines of like well two things one those guys should be doing all this anyways because they're it's their role in the company as contractors yeah. to get better at this and and you know what I mean like produce you shouldn't have to chase them for anything they should be chasing you to facilitate them doing it all yeah. and um, and the other thing is is like so it does like you can deliver it in any format so think of it like each coach takes a day in a concept and this is where Chandler talked about kind of identifying everybody's strengths and then they need to produce it in different formats so this week could be a blog next week could be a video you know what I mean like they keep cha- they, like so it's not always delivered on the same platform so they can then talk to different people that are on different platforms and get better at it that way That's, that's yeah. what I wanted to add to that, right? So it's not like make sure Mondays are just a blog post. You know what I mean? Like it could be anything. Yeah. No, like, and I get you. Like, so it's like they have their set day, and I think what we need to do, and like then literally like I think we have six topics. So they, so like, you know, Emily always posts on a Sunday night, but each week her topic changes, and I think like you say, like they need to now like, it's, you know, instead of doing that, like, you also need to find the different platform or the different, like, way of sharing that information. I don't okay. want to take the blog, like, the week, the daily blog away from them because, like, our community, like, I remember, like, we had a week there where, like, some stuff didn't get posted and people were like, like, where's the blog? Like, where's, like, our people read it. And so it's, like, I think that it's important to keep that because it, is really effective in keeping the community engaged, but I like the idea of the different platforms, different style, like, and just yeah. saying to them, like, you know, a video can be a one minute video on like, like anything. And I mean, they know but that they can share it, but it's making it easy. But share it to the blog. So you can still, you produce the yeah. content, you can still put it in the blog. It just doesn't have to be article driven, right? You no, can yeah. make it so that it's other platform um, friendly. Yeah. I mean, I share yeah. our blogs every day anyway on, like, Google and Facebook and yeah, Twitter right, exactly. and whatever. And so it's – but it's – yeah, I just – I think, like, the, the simplest of videos, like, because, like, you were saying, Chan, like, that's hot right now, like, makes mm-hmm. way more sense. Oh, it's huge, yeah. And if you put a video up, like, for example, when you're – if you have to promote something on Facebook, $5 in a blog maybe gets you – a couple of clicks, maybe at the most 10, but $5 into a video right now will get you 1500 views. And so you're yeah, going to maximize yeah. your potential for reach as well. And then you can educate, retarget motivate. all the video visitors. Yeah. Educate, motivate. Yeah. That's it. Now where, where's your, um, it should be an easy sell to the team, right? To just produce different types of content. Uh, but no, like, I think that totally okay with that. I think for us, like, it's the, it's the, like, now I have an easy sell of the videos because they're all so, like, like, they get in stress case mode because they think these videos have to be, like, perfect and whatever, but I mm-hmm. really like what you said, Channel. like, it's, it's about being a human and about being relatable and that, yeah. like, that's key, like, how are they going to come in if they think you're this rehearsed, like, you know, right. and like you said, like, with Emil, like, Emil is really good at it, so it's scary, whereas if they just like the simplicity of it, like the fact that that now can actually be something that's put out there. Whereas in the past, I don't like, don't, it wasn't. So it doesn't need to be, it doesn't like the whole production thing is, is just old school. Like just go and bang Facebook live. What's up guys. Like it doesn't, you you don't have to like be perfect anymore. It's just not, it's like, it's almost like a, like productions more of a, like you're trying to have like the one shot, like for the um, almost like magic pill where everybody's going to, you know, come and see it. And, oh, my God, it's so good. They're all coming to me. But that it's just it doesn't happen anymore because like raw, like fast footage now looks professional because of the way the cameras all work. And 
Yeah. You know? So it's it's um it's like think of it like you want behind the scenes type footage. Absolutely. More than productive yeah. than produced footage. <laughs> and then when you showcase the fact that, and people can tell. So if you if someone does a video and they're reading off a script and they've prepared it for three days, you can tell with like the robotic tone that they're reading off something or that they're super produced. But if someone's just like shooting off the hip, uh, their passion really comes out too. They ha they really have to dig into it, really understand what they're talking about, and that shows the mastery in their subject. Like, you have a minute, I need you to talk about this, and if they can talk for an entire minute, and you have to stop them. That's when you know that they're a master at their craft. They don't have to prepare, yeah. and they can shoot straight from the hip about it. <clears throat> it's big, Absolutely. and they get better weekly. So the, I mean, it might be awkward at first because it's new, but at, give them a two three weeks of doing it, and it's just they just. They'll just be able to kick it on, you know. Like I do Mondays, and and um, if I write something, right, I'll get it all written out the weekend before. If I don't, I'll just say at whatever eleven o'clock, I'm gonna make it real simple. I'm gonna stop what I'm doing, and I'm just gonna go Facebook Live and just talk about it yeah. live, right? Done. I got my material done. I get able to push it extremely <laughs> far, and life's good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I did a whole blog on this. I'll share in there as well. All the cool. secret stuff you're hiding from us, Chandler. What the fuck? I know. I need to figure out how to put all my blogs into the marketing school. There's thousands of them. Just make sure you say what they're about, so I don't have to like sit there and dig. Be like, oh, I, went shit, and I, I didn't need this one. <laughs> I went through and adjusted uh, the title, so you should be able to tell what they are now. Oh, awesome. So all Dash, the how, uh, how's the team doing with um? generating leads and in their business and everything. I know you guys had a big financial month. Was a lot of that tied to new business coming in? Oh, absolutely. I mean, a lot of it was tied to new business. A lot of it was like there was a lot of upfront payments as well. Yeah. Um, but I would say uh, <coughs> Ah, fuck. Um, I'd say I fucked up. 70% of oh. that. <laughs> I'm yeah. trying to eat oatmeal and I just dropped a bunch of it on my fucking table. Um, I would say 70% of the new business was referrals, client referrals. Very cool. That's awesome. My guys are like killing referrals right now. So what, what changed? Like what happened that month that made them get the referrals? Like what did they do for behavior? Honestly, I just like I just feel like everyone works their ass off. Like like I don't know how else to explain it. Like I just feel like, and and I I feel a little bit bad saying it because it's like it's not like they don't work their asses off all the time, but there was just like I don't know. They were just everyone was just seeing really driven that month. I right. mean, the flip side of it is like Tom worked like fuck sixty hours like one like a week. Like, mm -hmm. But Tom was really driven because he was like, "I'm taking home ten grand this month. Like that is my goal." Right. And like he he's he did the same this month, but he's working insane hours. And how long can he last? Like I don't know. Like TV made, he made like a couple hundred bucks less than Tom last month. But what the fuck? Sorry. Um, <laughs> he but. Like TB works <clears throat> less hours on the floor. Like right. TB works thirty hours. Tom works sixty. So right, and know. it's just, I mean it's a combination between new business, hybrid, like all the PTs doing with their clients, is like specialty programs, just kind of a combination of getting it all done. For Tom, yeah, like he has a lot of like he sells, um, like he likes to do. We call it. It's like our month no what is it rose gold membership or something so it's a pt every six weeks because our programming is if we change our programming cycles every six weeks right so he has a lot of people on that and then i mean tom makes 1500 bucks just having a specialty program right yeah. i mean he puts in a lot of work like a lot like so that's a whole he has to do a whole separate programming and then we have um Two no three two hour training blocks. So like we train Wednesday <clears throat> nights, Saturday mornings, and Sunday afternoons. Right. So he, I like I think he should charge more for the program. Um, but he's at a he's at a place where he makes enough money to like he can actually do it now. Whereas before like 
he was not making enough money doing what he was trying to do. Ah, you fucking piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is really good sound for... bites. Yeah. yeah. We have a, so, no, we're going to make little saying... pieces of this. Yeah, this is like my bad. We're at um, Charlie fucking Palmer's house. They uh, they moved like a while ago, yeah. and um, so we we're here for the weekend. And I'm trying to figure out how to use the coffee machine, and I think I fucked it up, but I think I just fixed it. So life is now good. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Tell um, but tell no, Charlie like, that um, I said hi when you see him. I will. He uh, he made a coffee and ran away. Um. <laughs> He, what was I going to say? What was I going to say? But yeah, like, I think, you know, like, I drove, like, whether our content that month was really good, like, I'm sure that was part of it, but there's just a lot of, like, because that's my, like, that was my question, like, you know, I had my best month as well, but it's like, how do, what did I do that was awesome, and I actually haven't gone back and looked at that, and I probably should just to find out, you know, like, what content killed it that month and yeah that's important yeah. and, and i think some one of the things dash is is it's not like there's not one thing that makes you guys have a really successful month it's a it, team it's effort me. it's a team <laughs> uh, yeah right but it, it is a, it's a team effort and it's making sure that it's all happening right and then it 100% it, then it gives you the rewards right yeah it's yeah. if everybody well, collectively like, does things and you have your machine running and it's flowing, then it yeah. makes it a lot easier. And then you can pay attention to what does well, what doesn't. And that's how your little mini series come out. You're like, all right, yeah. these ones are really popular. <clears throat> the cool thing last, like that month was um, like, Tom was like, or TV was like, I, like, I can't take another client right now. So they were like giving clients to each other, which like it happens anyway, but it was just like a little more like, present and I just yeah like the, the whole team was just like you know doing really well but then the flip side is, is like yeah. I mean we, did, we didn't have a shitty month this month but we definitely didn't have the month that we had last month right right that's very cool yeah it's exciting yeah. well this was right. awesome guys like it's really helpful um I know I challenge you and I put up fucking about 40 million questions a day no, those are per it's, it's not a challenge. It's content. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> so no, That's the thing like with it. marketing. It's not like it's one set thing and you go. It's it's a constant like analyzing and making adjustments and asking questions and yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes things like you know, if you guys really track it, you'll see like things work better in certain <clears throat> types of the year. You know, like yeah. Um, you know, one coach produces content and no one likes it, and another coach produces something similar. Uh, and everyone loves it, so that you know. Then you can start saying, "Well, you know, maybe you shouldn't produce this type of content because people don't like when you do it, but they love when he does it." So it doesn't, yeah. you know what I mean? Like that's the stuff you want to start really paying attention to. Well, you that's can like get better and better. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's like that's exactly what um, like seeing that video that Chandler posted, and when I was like, "Look, I like don't like be offended or whatever," but like this, like it doesn't work for me, and I get that. But like right. thinking about mm -hmm. that now. That might work for someone like Emil. Yeah, like, exactly. You know, it doesn't work for T Bear. It doesn't work for Tom. It right. definitely doesn't work for Andy. But like Chesty could probably pull something like that off. You know, yeah, or yeah, like I what? He's a weirdo. Yeah, and and so that was like, like that was a huge thing for me because I saw that video and I was like, this doesn't make like I was like I don't know how to not be an asshole, but like this doesn't make sense to me, and that's why I was like. I don't know what yeah. to do, you know, because that's not our culture and our community. You know, but, but he, right, so here's the thing, right? Like, so, and it, this is where it comes down to, like, you have a, there's a, it's your brand, right? Yeah. Which, it, and because you guys are, a, like, we all are, we all have these gyms, right? Our culture is our brand, and our, the program culture is our brand. But indiv individually, each coach has their own personality. So just because, you know, like, just because I got a call. Sorry. Just because, like, uh -oh. maybe like, so Chesty is trying to get clients. Am I back? You're back. Yeah. Am I back? 
Uh, so sure, if Chesty right. is trying to get clients and he's struggling, he might be trying to be or or like T -bear. project himself as T Bear or a Sheppy or whatever because this is the culture. But he he also fits into the culture with his personality. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so you, and yeah. if he can, if he can show everybody that he has his own unique personality and his own unique brand within your community culture, um, he'll attract like like people to him. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And like when I think about it now, like all his clients are fucking weirdos. Which is perfect. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So he has yeah. that connection to his community, and that's the key. It's understanding that. It's not that you're, you're, it's not with your brand that's important. It's the consumer perception of your brand, and that perception is exhibited by all the different different things they see coming out of your brand. And so all those things yeah. collectively create one brand, one culture, one identity, and one unique piece that a lot of other brands don't have. Everybody talks about like you have to have one brand with congruency and same colors and all this, but nobody understands how to develop and build culture in their brand. And the culture is when you define and really identify who you are, what you do, and it really allows the consumer to build that connection with you like you're talking about. <clears throat> yeah. No, like this has really opened my eyes. Like this has been very, very helpful. And I think like I think everyone needs to listen to this this blog just to like try and figure out like, yes, you have your brand, but what what is every single one of your coaches brand? And like now I like I think I like I Get it? Yeah, right, like, exactly. I, I even That's think cool. about like Mork and Mindy and like the Treehouse. Like I can, I know how, like who they would relate to, and like it's interesting. Just like thinking now, like what my how my guys would relate to the other people, and it, it is really about that human connection and how to make that unique almost in a sense within your brand so here's my brand but I have these five amazing coaches that are all completely different right yeah that's yep. a great point it's that's it it's the brand is one thing but the culture and the community and the connection is is huge that's when you differentiate yourself from everybody else and that's when you see all of a sudden everybody knows about one specific brand and it's because of the people inside the brand and the personalities they're showcasing and the things they're doing and right. that collectively builds strength over time so I, I want to point something out that's probably not politically correct within our circle. So in the, um, like, say, uh, like uh, CrossFit market, right, like we're always preaching rebranding, which we 100% believe in. You need to rebrand yourself for longevity. But some gyms have such a strong culture that they, they can maintain that CrossFit brand and, and do well, right? Because yeah. they understand, because the whole thing's built around culture. That said, what we've seen is, is, is it lasts for so long and then it starts not to work anymore. Or if, if that culture starts to splinter off and open up different gyms around you and everything. Like yeah. it's an up and down yeah. thing. You're always, even if you're crushing the culture side of things and doing everything right, you still long term fight against your own brand at some point. Yeah, you know, yeah, but it might work. It might be working for people, and if it is, then there's no urgency to change. And if it stops working, know that it's not that scary just to change your brand. And uh, as long as you're building culture and personality around the coaches, you can just change the brand overnight and still continue to crush it. Yeah, yeah I, think I think we yeah, kind sure. of fall into that category too. Like, sorry, Chan. Um, like I know Patty says, like no one says CrossFit at Mad Lab School, but they do, and. Right. Because wrong with that. what? Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, no, like you know what I mean? Like, it's who you guys are. Yeah, and like, yeah, that people in our like in our gym realize now that what we deliver is a combination of CrossFit, gymnastics, mobility, like metabolic, like, and it's the culture that we've built in that place, which makes it Mad Lab. And I think that like everyone gets so tied up when like we have to make this whole new culture that's not CrossFit. I'm like, no, you don't. You just have to make a culture that's your community and that everyone loves and they can still come and do CrossFit or whatever right. it is, but like. Right, yeah, that's it. That's like build, yeah. your, build your brand and build that identity behind your brand, build that culture with your staff and your people and right. then leverage things like CrossFit. So you don't necessarily have to have CrossFit on your name at all. 
but you can leverage it. Like people inside collectively know they do it. People know it's part of what you do. People know weightlifting is part of what you do, but all of those little things don't define your culture and you don't allow that to define your culture. So in your big culture and your big identity is Mad Lab, but everybody inside is like, oh yeah, we do CrossFit and weightlifting and all this stuff in Mad Lab, but your identity is Mad Mad Lab. Lab. We go to Mad Lab. Yeah. And that was That's something that for, for years, Dash, we ran into this problem where, like, I used to be personally, like, offended by it, but it's like, we always had, and you always had, your culture, your community, your everything. And your mistake, and my mistake was, we, we allowed people to call it and identify our, what we delivered for a culture, and then just say it was CrossFit. So yeah. we, we, allowed, we allowed normal people to believe that somebody in a far distant land created our culture and our gym for us. And that's some big mistake that's happened all over the world. And that's well, why it's like, and now, and now we're trying to then, now, now it's like, no, we're Mad Lab, and no, we're Treehouse and all this shit, right? It's the same culture. It's just give yeah. credit where credit's due. Don't come up to me. You know, I've been training you for eight years. Don't come up to me and tell me that CrossFit changed your life because CrossFit had nothing to do with it. Absolutely. Right? It, it was me and my culture and my gym. Yeah, right, so that, that's how we've been the issue. Right. Uh, yeah, you need to take to. like the last two minutes of this conversation and post that in the like the fucking Mad Lab group forum because that is a hundred percent correct. And it is I don't know, like I think that you just said it so well, Dave. Like it it really Yeah. I, I don't know, like that was just perfect. Cool. That's what we'll do. Yeah. <laughs> That will be exciting. I think that's what everybody's missing. It's what's your identity and your culture and your identity isn't CrossFit. That's just something that you do. But people's lives are changed and the whole game is built around Mad Lab School or Stone Age Fuel or Treehouse and these little places that we have. So that way, whatever we want to leverage, we can leverage. But we always have our identity and people are always hashtagging our own gym name and people are always talking about, yeah, Stone Age Fuel changed my life. And that's when we know we've won. And that's like, it's interesting because like in the last week or two weeks probably, I've had like two leads come in off of the website that have been like, oh, I currently train at XYZ Fitness down the road from you guys and my membership is up in a month. So I wanted to check out other facilities. And it's like, none of our clients are doing that because what (laughs) Mad Lab has is the culture and the community and other places don't have, like yes other places have what we have but there's something that we do and we do differently because our clients stick around our atten- like our attention is through the roof we have referrals we have people from other gyms coming to our place because they had a terrible experience at another place like yeah you you developed that that, 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 is, Mad Lab. that is Mad Lab school that is not CrossFit because people are leaving CrossFits to come to Mad Lab that's yeah, right. You've created okay. something unique amongst your people and your brand, and you've created something that they can connect with and identify with, and something that's special. Like CrossFit is a name; it's not special anymore. But our specific brands and our specific microcosms of what we do are incredibly special, and we have to find a way to showcase that to people. And it, and the ones who do Absolutely. are the ones who develop that identity and that difference. <clears throat> Very cool. This has okay. been awesome, guys. Great, great. Yeah, good one. times. Sorry I was um, on and off and late, but I think I finished yeah. up. Yeah, what a jerk. Sure. <laughs> it only took you 27 Come minutes to figure it out, and then we got it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right, awesome. Guys. All right, okay. guys. Well, thanks, I'll you guys. I really up, appreciate then. it. You're welcome. See you next week. <clears throat> Later, guys. Yeah. See ya. Bye.